From Wish TV, your local news source, this is Breaking News. Let's get right to the breaking news, all on the huge questions and confusion surrounding Indiana's unemployment system. It's been an afternoon full of a lot of developments. Yeah. The state now says federal expanded unemployment payments could resume as early as Friday. That word came out about an hour ago. It follows a ruling by Indiana's Court of Appeals, one that requires the state to rejoin the federal pandemic assistance. It includes the extra $300 weekly payments plus expansion of unemployment, eligibility beyond 26 weeks, and to self-employed and contract workers. Now, Governor Eric Holcomb had opted the state out of the program back on June 19th. We also have a new statement from the governor's office saying, quote, we acknowledge the Court of Appeals decision today, notwithstanding the Department of Workforce Development will continue to work with the U.S. Department of Labor on finalizing the pandemic unemployment insurance benefits to comply with the judge's order. And now we turn to I Team 8 and a growing part of the unemployment crisis right here in Indiana. Hundreds of people say that the state has ordered them to repay thousands of dollars of unemployment benefits. But here's the thing, the state approved them to receive it. We've been telling you about this for the past two weeks, and we're putting our full I Team 8 resources on this to demand answers and to demand solutions. Let's start tonight with I Team 8's Richard Essex. Phil and Alexis, I want you to take a look at this stack of papers that we have here. There are more than 450 complaints that we've received about Indiana's unemployment system in just 48 hours. Nearly 200 of these are from people facing demands, like we have told you last week, to pay back thousands of dollars they already received to the state, even though they may have already been eligible to receive the money in the first place. Almost every single complaint sent to IT made over the weekend is one of heartbreaking struggle to survive. Cynthia Shipley is a contract dog groomer, the place she worked at, permanently closed last fall. The state has ordered her to repay $11,000. She says she doesn't have the money and says her house is in foreclosure and money is running out. But once I pay my utilities and my phone bill to apply for jobs and whatnot, I'm broke. Of the three women we talked to today, all have orders to repay the state all or most of their pandemic unemployment benefits. One common theme in rejection is the state claims it did not receive proof of employment, even though nearly all of them say it was successfully uploaded on the state's website. Joanne Reffitt is a school portrait photographer, her company shut down during the pandemic. She has been ordered to repay nearly $4,000 of unemployment benefits. Our bosses said, okay, you're laid off for the pandemic, claim unemployment. So we did. And then after the fact, they came back to us and said, well, during this time frame, you guys shut down. Well, we don't shut down, but they, they still said we couldn't claim it. Gina Tomasello was a self-employed cleaner. She was approved for unemployment right from the beginning. Now the state has ordered her to repay close to $7,000, which she's already doing $100 a month. Tomasello filed an appeal, which was denied because she says she couldn't verify her phone number with the state. She asked for a second appeal, and the state refused. And just because I forgot to verify my phone number with them, they wouldn't let me have another appeal. All three were approved by the Department of Workforce Development for unemployment benefits. Federal law expanded unemployment eligibility during the pandemic to include self-employed, contract, and gig workers. All three have depended on the federal and state unemployment benefits to keep the lights on, food on the table, and a roof over their head. We want direct answers to the questions about all this confusion, the documents on proof of employment, and about the appeals process for those that have been ordered to, to pay back the money. And again, we have heard nothing. We are going to keep asking these questions, and we're going to keep asking them until the governor or the commissioner of the, of the Department of Workforce Development gives us some real answers. At the State House, Richard Essex, Wish TV, WishTV.com, and follow us on Facebook. Richard, thank you very much. More now in that story as we bring in News 8's uh, Jasmine Miner. Jasmine, you've found one woman taking it on herself to help other families. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you heard a little bit from Richard there of just all the people making the mistakes or maybe missing something on those filings for the appeal process. That's what this woman is trying to help out with. Uh, her name's Jennifer Glenn, and she's nothing special, but she says uh, she's got no formal training in working in the unemployment system. She's just a mom of two who's had to file before and someone who's 
pretty good at doing research. Well, that research, along with the Giving Heart, has allowed her to reach over 7,000 people in need of unemployment help. She says she's been mostly been helping people with their claims. She says if a claim has an issue, it won't be fixed until an investigator clears it. So she says the Indiana Department of Workforce Development currently has 16 issues listed on their COVID-19 frequently asked questions worksheet. She, the list that she created, has about 47 all issues that could keep somebody from getting paid. I was doing all the legwork and having the claimant send the letter to the claims representatives and then the claims representatives would clear the issue. I've had people tell me that they were on the brink of depression until I helped them, that uh, they were uh, on the verge of giving up until I gave them hope. Well, Jennifer says she created these templates for others to fill out to make sure they are giving claims representatives the right kind of information. She says many people have been denied simply for making a small error on their forms. Well, we've got some resources right now that the group created on wishtv.com. Just click on As Seen on Wish TV. I'm Jasmine Miner for Wish TV, wishtv.com. And don't forget to give us a follow on Facebook. Jasmine, thank you so much.